All right, hey guys. So today we are talking about functions and relations. Um, and what is a relation? You could think of a relation just like what the word says. A relation is like a relationship. So if we were to consider this equation here, y is equal to 2x, right? This represents a relationship between x and y. So what this actually says, well, in this case, we have x and y being elements of integers, right? And an equation that describes a relationship between x and y. So what it says is that in this case, this relationship says that y is two times greater than x. And we could see this quite easily if it is that we were to input um, x being one, then y will end up being two times one, which is two. So this relationship here shows that y is two times greater than x, right? Now we could write this with the input, the x value here, and the output being the y value over here. And you know that this is usually, um, we see this as a coordinate in coordinate geometry, right? Where we have the x value first, um, with a comma and the y value after, right? This here, when we write it in this way, is called an ordered pair. So we have the ordered pairs. Now we can have many ordered pairs, right? So this pair is, is just with x having a value of one to give us a corresponding y value of two. But let's look at some of the other ordered pairs here. We, we could see that from this equation, when x is one, y is two. However, if x is 2, then y will be 4, right? If x is 3, y will be 6. If x is 4, y will be 8. If x is 5, y will be 10. And if x is 6, y will be 12. So we could see the relationship here that y is always 2 times greater than x, right? Now, a set of ordered pairs is called a relation or a mapping. So when we have this equation here, y is equal to 2x, we could represent it as a set. And this is what the set would look like. I have here the set A is equal to the set of, and I have a list of ordered pairs, and dot, dot, dot means it goes on till, you know, who knows. And, um, and this actually represents, this set actually represents a relation, right? So this is a relation. It shows the relationship between each element of X and Y. Nice. Right? So you could see here that a relation is just another word for an equation. An equation is just, you know, an equation is a relationship as we've been seeing um, all this time. So imagine that we have this relation, y is equal to 2x, and this is the set of ordered pairs. Now there are many ways to represent a relation. And one of those ways um, is using a bubble diagram. So we see here that we have this bubble, and this bubble will represent our x values. And then we have the x values in the bubble, one to six, right? We'll just deal with one to six. You know, it could go on till infinity. Right. And then we have another bubble to represent the Y values. Now the X values we could take as the input and the Y values we could take as the output, right? So when we input one, the output is two. And you see, we just draw a diagram to connect the corresponding ordered pair, right? If we input two, the output will be four. If we input three, the output will be six. If we input four, the output would be eight and so on. So this bubble diagram is one way to represent a relation. Now, the X values, we usually call this the domain. And the Y values, we usually call it the range, right? So the domain, the domain are basically all of the X values. Yeah, so we could see here that the X values are uh, the first um, number in the ordered pair. Um, we could see here in the circle, uh, the red circles, right? 
the y values now the range that is the second number in the ordered pair so we could see here the blue circles show us the range right now let's talk a little bit more about the range because you know we have this range of y values here from 2 to 12 but remember y is an element of integers right so y could be any integer yeah? so we have the range and we'll represent it as a set but that is a small tiny subset inside of a larger set called the codomain so the codomain you could really think about the codomain as all of the possible values that y could possibly be because y is an element of integers right however the range tells us the y values that actually come out of the equation or the relation yeah so the codomain are all of the possible values of y and the range we talk about the um the the values of y that come directly out of the equation yeah so there are a couple other ways to represent a relation and we see here that having a bubble diagram is one way it's also called a mapping and please make a note of that because some questions will ask you to draw a mapping and that is what they're talking about here um, another way is by using um, number lines to represent x and y so i could have zero going to zero the x value one going to the y value two the x value two going to the y value four this is very much like a bubble diagram it's very much like a mapping it's just that we use number lines instead and then the other way is a way that we're quite familiar with is by actually plotting the points on a Cartesian plane and drawing the line or the graph of the relation to see what the relation looks like. So these are the three ways that we could represent relations and there are other ways as well, but these are three of the main ways, right? Now we have to get into the types of relations and this is where we're really getting into things, right? So we're considering y is equal to 2x and let's look at these ordered pairs here, right? And we have the set of ordered pairs, the set A of ordered pairs, right? And this is a one-to-one -one relation. Now, what do I mean by one-to-one? -one? Well, for every one input x, I have only one input y. And we could see it clearly in the bubble diagram, right? So when I have this one, when x is one, y will only be a single output. So y is two, right? If x is the number two, right? Um, the output, you'll only have one output here and that is the number four, yeah? So we have um, one to one relation where we have one input and one input gives us one output, right? So that's called a one-to-one -one relation. Um, we could see here what a one-to-one -one relation looks like on a graph. This is, um, this is a line, and we could see here that we have one input, right? One X value maps on to one Y value. So a one-to-one -one relation for every single value of x, there can only be one value of y, right? However, there are other types of relations. y is equal to x squared, and we'll check out some of the ordered pairs here. So if x is equal to one, we input x is equal to one, then y will be one squared, which is one, yeah? If we were to input x is equal to negative 1, y will be negative 1 squared, which is also 1. So we could see here that I have two different values for x, 
and for these different inputs i am getting the same output right so with many inputs i get one output and just remember that we could see that here for two two squared gives us four but negative two squared also gives us four and so this is a many to one relationship where many inputs could give us one output a many to one relation and if we look at it on a bubble diagram here um, we could see that we have two values of x and they both map on to one value of y two values of x mapping onto one so i have many values of x mapping onto one value of y many inputs mapping to one output is a many to one relation yeah and um, we could see here this is the graph of y is equal to x squared and we could see what going on here i have two different values of x in the green lines and they both have the same value of y so this is how we could see that two different values of x could map on to the same value of y in a many to one relation so for many values of x there is only one value for y for many inputs we have one output right? moving on to the third type of relation let's consider y is equal to the square root of x yeah and we'll take a look at the ordered pairs so if x is one y is the square root of one which is one right however if x is one the square root of one could also be negative one remember a square root could be the answer to a square root could be positive or negative is a plus or minus right so the square root of one you know i have one value for x which is one x is equal to one and the square root of one could either be plus one or negative one yeah so we see in here that i have one input that go into many outputs similarly if we look at other ordered pairs we could see that the square root of four is two but the square root of four could also be negative two yeah so one input gives us many outputs and so this is a one to many relation we could see how it looks in the bubble diagram one input x and you could see that at one input x maps to two different values of y so this is a one to many relation where one x value could have many different y values and this is the graph for y is equal to the square root of x where we could see that one value for x could map on to two different values for y and so this is a one to many relation one value of x will have many values of y and we have one final um, type of relation and let's consider this equation x squared plus y squared is equal to 25. now let's take a look at the ordered pairs we'll see here that when x is zero y could be five or negative five so it seems to be, to, to, to be a one to many relation however when x is 5 or negative 5 y is 0 so i still have many values of x going to one value of y right so in this relation here and let's take a look at this 3 when x is 3 y could be plus 4 or negative 4 but if y is 3 x could be plus 4 or negative 4 so what we have is we have many values of x going to one value of y but we also have many values of y going to one value of x so this is called a many to many relation where we have many inputs could map on to many outputs so we could see how this looks on a mapping or a bubble diagram where we have many inputs mapping onto one output y 
or we can have one input mapping on to many outputs Y, yeah? And this is called a many-to-many -many relation. Let's see how this looks on a graph, right? So we have the graph y, x squared plus y squared is equal to 25. This is the equation for a perfect circle. And we could see here that one value for y gives us two different values for x. But at the same time, one value for x could give us two different values for y. So this is a many-to-many -many relation where one value of x will have many values of y, or conversely, one value of y can have many values for x. Yeah? Now let's just summarize is four different types of relations that we learned there. So let's just summarize. We had the one-to-one -one relation. We had the many-to-one relation. We had the one-to-many relation, and we had the many-to-many -many relation. So take your time, go through the video, pause these things and take a look at it. I would suggest that you write down all of these things as notes in your book so you don't have to keep coming back to the video. All of these things should be in your book, right? Now let's talk about functions. And what is the difference between a function and a relation? Well, let's consider the, uh, the equation y is equal to 2x, right? Now, for one input, x is 1, I will get one output, y is 2, right? And this is super important. This is what makes a function. A function is... For every input x, we will have one single output y. And we could see here the bubble diagram for y is equal to 2x. For this value, for this input x, I only have one output y. For this input x, I only have one output y. For this input x, I only have one output y. So we could see here that this is a one-to-one -one relation and the name kind of suggests it, one input to one output. And once we have one output, then it is a function. So a function has one single output for every input, yeah? Let's take a look at the second one y is equal to x squared and let's look at the bubble diagram and you could pause the video for a minute and tell me if this is a function and the answer is yes it is a function this is a many to one relationship but we could see that even though we have many values of x go into one value of y we still have a situation where each value of x, each input, still only has one output. So when x is 1, that will only have one output, y is 1. And when x is negative 1, that could only have one output, y is 1. It doesn't matter that these two x's share in the same output. What matters is that for each input, I only have one output. And you can just look at the name, many to one. So many inputs, but we still have one output. So yes, this is a function. So when we are talking about functions now, instead of using y, we will actually use the term f of x. And you see in here, f. With a, with a brackets x inside of it, f of x, and that means that it's a function of x. We could usually just put f of x wherever we see y. You could, um, you could think of f of x and y as being the same thing. So y is equal to f of x, so y is a function of x. And so for every time I have y, I will put that f of x there. And it means the same thing, but it is to tell us that this particular type of relation is in fact a function, which means that there is only one output for every input. There's only one 
f of x value there's only one y value for every input right so yes these are both functions now taking a look at the other types of relations yeah we could see here that we have this one input x but when we plug in this one input x we have two different outputs no we can't have that all right so when one input x goes in so when x is equal to one the output could either be one or negative one so this is not a function and we could see it with the name one input to many outputs so once you have many outputs you can't have a function so this is absolutely not a function and let's look at this one many to many if we have many inputs to many outputs once you're dealing with many outputs it is not a function so these are not functions right so just as a summary we have the four um, types of relations one to one many to one one to many many to many but only these two here are um, considered to be functions right and you can see I use f of x for them right so um so and you can see here that the name kind of gives it away that we have the, the word one for for the output here so once you have an output of one once you determine what kind of a relation it is if it's a one-to-one -one relation if it's a many-to-one -one relation once that output is one you know you're dealing with a function right now let's take a look at the vertical line test so the vertical line test is a good way to just check and see if um if we are dealing with a function or not yeah so you see here that i have a line all right and this line is the line y is equal to 2x and what I will do is I will just pass this vertical line across the function and you can see that this vertical line will always cut the graph at one point. So if it's cutting the graph at one point, then it is a function. Yeah. So let's look at another type of function. This is um, this is y is equal to x squared. And the graph y is equal to x squared when we do the vertical line test we could see that the vertical line is always cutting the graph at one point always cutting the graph at one single point so that means that this is a function so once this vertical line cuts the graph at one single point we are dealing with a function right now let's take a look at this function here um, x squared plus y squared equals 10 and we could see it's a circle but look when we do the vertical line test if it cuts this graph at two points so it cuts the circle at two points we could see here so this is not a function at all right and let's check out um, this over here so we could see that this is the this is a vertical line x is equal to 4 and if we do the vertical line test we could see that well yeah this is cutting this is cutting an infinite points so we have infinite values of y here so um so so the 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 graph x is equal to 4 according to the vertical line test this is not a function definitely the questions sometimes you will see a graph like this and you will just need to imagine or you could use a pencil and draw your vertical lines for the vertical lines test to see if any one of these are functions so you could let me know in class which one of these are functions and which one of these are not functions right now let's um take a look at some questions here dealing with uh dealing with functions and relations right so we see here that we have a question um, 
they give us this bubble diagram or a mapping and they tell us to sketch a graph of the relation and then they ask us is the relation a function now we could see here that the first one would be our domain x and the second one would be our range y right um, forgive my handwriting <laughs> yeah it's kind of weird to write with this pen we could see here that one value for x one input goes to many different outputs so i have these two different values here um these two different outputs these two different values of y for one input right so we could tell immediately one input many outputs this is a one to many relation so first of all no this is not a function yeah now they told us to sketch the graph and they gave us a little um a little bit of a of a uh, Cartesian plane here so let's just check it when X is 1 Y is 2 so that will be this point or Y is negative 2 that will be this point yeah when X is 3 Y is 0 that will be this point yeah and when X is negative 5 Y could be or y could be negative 4 so you could see what this graph looks like and we could try to sketch it however you don't really have to sketch it um, just drawing the points is actually good enough right so this is what happens when we sketch the graph we see what the relation looks like we could see that it's a one-to-many relation and that it is not a function. Now they ask us for the domain and the range. So we could see here that the domain x, the greatest value of x, what is the largest value of x is 3, right? And the smallest value of x is 5, yeah? So in the domain we have x, the largest value of x is 3. So x will be less than 3, but x will be greater than negative 5. So this is how we will write our domain and our range. We will write it as a range of values, right? So can you do the range for y? What will y be? The range for y. What is the largest value of y? 4. Right, so the largest value of y is 4, so y will be less than 4. And the smallest value for y is negative 4, right? So y will be greater than negative 4, right? So this is the smallest value, this is the largest value, and this here will be our range, and this is how we write the range. So let's take a look at another different kind of question, and these questions are pretty easy, right? So they, they say here in this question, use a table to describe the relation. And they're asking you to do a table, and doing a table is pretty much just like doing a bubble diagram, yeah? So we can have, let's draw a real quick table of X and Y values, right? And let's see here. I'll just draw a really quick table. Oh, forgive my handwriting. It's kind of weird writing on this thing. Right. So we see here that we'll estimate when X is 1, Y gives us negative 1. So 1, negative 1, right? When X is 2, Y gives us 3. However, the 3 could also be for negative 2 as well. Right? When x is 6, y is 2. And when x is negative 2 as well, 
y could also be negative 5 so i have this negative 2 as well here and negative 5. can you tell me what kind of a relation this is yeah is it possible for you to to, to tell me what kind of a relation are we dealing with here so maybe we could draw a bubble diagram and see right so what are the values that we have for x we have one we have two we have negative two and we have six yeah so this is our x bubble it, it looks really retarded or, but, you know, um, x and what are the values for y we have what here we have negative one we have three we have two and we have negative five so these are the y values here so this is my domain and this is my range right and from one we could go to negative one so that's okay we could see here that from two we go to three all right However, from negative two, we also go to three. So that gives us a, a many to one kind of thing. But then we see in there that from six, we could go to two. And then from this negative two, we could also go to negative five. So we have many to one. Um, many going to one two and negative two both go to three but then we have one going to many um this negative two goes to three and negative five so this is a many to many i really had a practice writing with this thing boy that's horrible <laughs> yeah um so this is a many to many relation so it is absolutely not a function can you can you um give me the domain and the range So what is the domain and the range here, right? So we have the domain being the values of X, the range being the values of Y. And we could see here, what is the largest value of X? The largest value of X seems to be six. The smallest value of x seems to be negative 2, so that would be the domain. x is between negative 2 and 6. And the range, the largest value for y seems to be 3. And the smallest value for y seems to be negative 5. So that would be the range. And no, it's not a function. So let's take a look at this question here. Um, determine... So determine whether the relation is a function. If it is not a function, circle the ordered pairs that cause it not to be a function. So yes or no, is this a function? Right? Why don't you pause the video and see? And I'll give you a hint. You want to check the inputs and make sure that for each input, you only have one output. So hopefully you paused the video. So let's check it out now, right? So we have this input negative two and the output is two, right? So are there any other negative two inputs? No. So it seems that, and what about this zero? Are there any other zero inputs? No. So therefore this zero would only have that one output. What about one? Are there any other ones? Yes, look, how, look we have a one here. So we have our, our, our one input giving me an output of six, but then we have this one input here giving me an output of seven. So this single input has two different outputs. So because of this, because of this here, this is not a function, yeah? So let's check out B. We look at our inputs, zero anywhere else, no. Two, two anywhere else, no. Three, three anywhere else, no. Four, anywhere else, no. Five, and negative so five. So we see here that we have all unique inputs and each input will only have one output. So yes, 
this is a function right and let's check out c we look at zero do i have zero anywhere else yes look zero here so that means that for this input zero i could have an output of negative five and for the input zero i could also have an output of four so because of these two means no this is not a function So let's take a look at this last question here. We're just looking at some of the different types of questions that you could get in a functions relations um, situation. So we have this equation, f of x. So we see in here that it's a function, yes? f of x is equal to negative x squared, okay? So they say if the domain, what is the domain? The domain refers to the x values, right? So if the domain of this function is integer values of x, so they're saying that the domain will only have integers, yeah? Such that x is between negative 3 and 0. So that means that all of the integers, the domain would be all of the integers between negative 3 and 0, right? So what do I have here for x? My domain would be negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, right? And should I include 0? No, I should not include 0. Why should I not include 0? Because if I look here, this sign is an equal. It has a less than or equal to, right? But this one doesn't have the equal, yeah? And we could see that there. So therefore, zero is not included, but the negative three will be included, right? So this here, this is our range of, uh, I'm sorry, this is our domain of, of, of the function, right? The function being um, negative x squared. So let's find the range now, and the range would be f of x or we, we also know it as y, but because it's a function, we call it f of x, right? So if we have negative three, if x is negative three, then negative three squared, three trees are nine, but then we have this negative outside here, right? So let me just do this um, on the side here, f of x, and this is a lovely, um, a lovely time to introduce a concept for you. You see how I have the f, of x in brackets and that is equal to one I'm um, sorry that is equal to negative x squared right so if I wanted to plug the value if I wanted to put x is negative 3 what I would see is the f of negative 3 right and that is equal to minus brackets negative 3 which is x squared so negative 3 squared will give me um, 3 3 is 9 right and then I'll have this negative in front of there so I have the positive 9 in the brackets but the negative there so this will be negative 9 right so this is the f of negative 3 right the f of negative 2 now would be what? 2 twos are 4, so this will be negative 4. And then the f of negative 1 would be um, 1 squared, or negative 1 squared will be 1. And then I have the negative sign in front of it, so I'll have negative 1. So now this will give me the range. So the range... I could see um, is we could use f of x now what is the largest number the largest number is negative 1 so I could put is less than or equal to negative 1 or it is greater than or equal to negative 9 and that is the range yeah so these questions are actually really quite easy um, and functions and relations 
is not a tough topic at all. I think we've done a lot harder things in class. So you could see here that I will be posting um, this video with the PDF and the PDF will have links and those links will be worksheets. So please feel free to do these worksheets and I'll actually leave an assignment for you all to hand up. So that's it for functions and relations and I hope that you guys understood everything. And if you have any questions, you could feel free to ask me about it in class and have a good day.